we are continuing on the discussion of threads and needles. We're going to talk um, tension. No, we're talking the same thing, but for the long arm. Now, if you don't have a long arm, I suggest you stay around because you might learn something. Chris and everyone else has done. I only watched really the first day with Chris, and it was really good. Yeah, what was, she, she what talked, she about, talked all the about threads. Threads, amazing. And so the next, the next day was needles, and it was oh, also amazing. Okay, um, because honestly, I didn't know there was that much to know about needles. There's a lot more than we think. Yeah. So we are going to talk the same thing, but about long arms specifically. So. Um, Handy Quilter has this great uh, uh, handout they produce called TNT. So that will be found on Deal of the Day. You can download. That's a free download that comes from Handy Quilter. I just went onto the Handy Quilter website. They have, if you go to education and then resources, they have about 10 things that you can print up that are uh, just really great information all about. So TNT stands for thread, needles, tension, thread, needles, tension, right? Yep. So that's what we're going to talk today. So first of all, I wanted to show you, I got some pictures off the internet. Um, why, so Chris talked on this too, why do I need a new needle, right? So here is a picture of a new needle. Look at that sharp point on there. Yep. Here's a picture of that a, lovely. that is, here's a picture of a slightly used needle. Can you see that? A little ding in it. Mm -hmm. And here is, and that's a terrible picture. I don't know if you can see it. Um, and someone sent us a picture of a, a really enlarged one. And it was basically that, that that tip of the needle is just like that. Like it's not, it's not sharp anymore. And that was just from one quilt, right? I was sewing the other day on my sewing machine. Uh -huh. And I told my husband, I'm like, ooh, you can hear my sewing machine. I said, can you hear that punchy sound? Oh, and yeah. And he's like, yeah. And I says, it's time to change the needle. needle. It's past time to change the needle when you hear kind of the pop, 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 pop. Right. I don't like this. I got something. Oh, you made it? Did you record it? No. Oh, oh, just kidding. It's not in my pocket. Oh, darn. I found something today. Oh, like, darn, barn. Ah, okay. No. So, um, and Chris was saying, well, how often should you change your needle? So long arm, well, for long arm quilting, for quilting, they say you should change. Every quilt deserves a new needle. So that's not, that's not that often. Um, I, I pulled this up and I, so I had to go to Handy Quilter this morning and I went and talked to, uh, Glenn. Glenn's this amazing, he's like the nicest guy. He was actually a Bernina tech. So he left, he came from Bernina to Handy Quilter. He just knows everything about sewing machines, sewing machine technology, sewing technology is just a, super smart. So I found this, but it, it says... Um, just in the, the bold right there is what I want to hit on. The needle go uh, pounding 30 to 50 times a second. So that's how fast it's going. And those high speed machines are in the more that, so that needle is going up and down 50 times in a second, right? Yeah. Isn't that crazy? So if you think about that, every time it goes down, it's going to get more dull, more dull. So that's why we should change it more often. often. I wanted to talk about the anatomy of a needle. I think this is kind of interesting. So you see on the left there, you see that there is the long groove down the front. So we always make a joke at Handy Quilter that we always joke that it's called that because that's how you determine or distinguish which direction it is. So the long groove is in the front. What Do you know what that long groove is for? I'm, I'm guessing it's kind of to hold the thread. It's to protect the thread. Yep, yeah. exactly. So the thread will go in that slot. And as it's going up and down that 50 times in a second, that protects the thread from sh breaking, shredding, etc. So that's what that long group is from. And then you see that the, the bottom, the scarf of the needle. So that's that little hollowed out, hollowed out point, mm -hmm. hollowed out. So that should always go at the back. So if like on a long arm, if you're having a hard time with your pulling your needle up or pulling your thread up or something, or your thread's not coming up. The first thing to check is, is your needle in correctly? Um, and like even, even seasoned quilters can have an issue. Like they'll call, well, it's not working quite right. Well, you sure? Hey ladies, <laughs> they came at three o'clock. They want to be, they want to be shown on three at three, my friends. Um, she nods her head. So 
even seasoned quilters, when they change their needle, sometimes might forget to put it on or the right direction. Or sometimes you think you have it in right, yeah. and just as you're trying to get it in there, it turns a little bit. Yeah. So, so one time I had a late, like a customer, I said, okay, will you please send me a, a picture of your needle? And there, I like you could see that there was in the, she just had it in backwards. It's okay. Everyone does it. It's fine. All right. How to read the needle package. So I think Chris showed this too. But it's, these are some things where these are slightly different from uh, for long arm needles. The biggest being, uh, da, da, da. so the system, that's sometimes important. So you see where it says needle system, that's system 134. There's like hundreds of different systems that the needle manufacturers or people will use. So 134 is generally for long arm. And then the point, that is an R. So you can get an R, which is a sharp, MR, which is a fast, and then um, an FFG, which is a ballpoint. And then the size there, so it says 10. Um, then the one, 110 slash 18, that's the size right there. The 10 is the number of needles, 10, 118, 110 slash 18. So that is a size 18 needle. So, all right. Um, I just want to read the comments quick. Uh, hi from Kathy, Brand, Amber, Cox, and Sandy Lai working on, oh, they're from a little sewing party. Oh, they are. Hello. Um, does the stabilizer make a difference too in embroidery needles? It probably does. Right? I think it does. Um, Definitely. The one that I think is the most dramatic is this, if you're using the sticky back. And so there oh. it is because it's like it, it starts to, it just has right. that sticky, the on, sticky there. on it. Yeah. yeah. I have, so I, I used to think it didn't matter. Like I used to say, Oh no, it's fine. And then I was doing like all this applique and I had that like Keaton bond on the back mm -hmm. and it was totally going up my needle. I'm like, yep. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, so if you're using that, they do have like the Teflon, the Teflon needles, needles yeah. and that helps, but it doesn't solve it. Like you're still going to get some of that residue. So I would just really watch it if you're using sticky back. And like you said, the lighter weight stuff, like a lighter weight mesh is mm -hmm. not going to be quite as dramatic right. of a thing, but, and I think anytime you start getting those breakage issues, when you're embroidering, um, mm -hmm. that's the first thing I do is the needle. Yeah. What do you do the, 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 Check T, the needle, the T and T, the thread, TNT, needle, tension. Threads. So I, we just had the, oh yeah, Kim says anti-glue anti needles. Anti-glue yeah. So oh, yeah, Jennifer, it's a Teflon foot, foot and an anti-glue Yeah, anti-glue. Yeah. So Jennifer says, what size do you like to use? Well, you want to use the thread, the needle that is for the size of the thread that you're using. So just like Chris talked about, um, the higher the number, on the thread means it's smaller. The lower the number on the thread means it's bigger. Needle is the opposite, right? The higher the number, yeah. So there's really good thread guides. If you go, I like to go to Superior Threads. Um, they have a really good thread guide on there. And there's one on, well, there's one on that handout, actually, sorry. There's one on the bottom of this handout. So it basically said, you can go from 12 up to a 20 um most of the threads you're using so 16 is for a 60 weight 58 40 weight or 18 is for a 50 40 30. so most you're going to use are 13 or 18 or 16 or 18. so um just check with the thread that you're using so you want to match your thread to your your needle to your thread so your needle size is dependent on your thread size yeah okay um thanks tnt i love that okay I had to use a bigger needle than 7511 on spring showers with the vinyl and the puffy stuff. Can't remember the name. Okay. Yeah. So the flexi foam, mm -hmm. a little harder to get through. Yeah. It just, and it gives you a lot more bulk. Right. So your needle's working a little bit harder. Yeah. So that's the same thing with the long arm. I mean, if you're having problems, that's one thing to check. Okay. Go up and go up a size. So if you're usually using a 16, go up to 18. Um, <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Bryce says I got to go to Crumble. See, yeah. you. okay. See you, Bryce. Um, so if you have, if you're having breaking shredded, whatever, go up a size on your needle. So go up to a 16 or go up to an 18 from a 16. Right. Yeah. Okay. Next, we want to talk threads. And do you think I brought any over here with me? Um. Hold on. 
I mean, there's thread here, but I don't, it's, uh, I just want to see, Let's see if I can do this without turning it off. Like, there's a whole thing of thread. <laughs> you're like, you're like, well, there's this huge, that is 30 weight. I don't, oh, cotton quilting embroidery. Yeah, there's a little thread right there. Okay. This is glide. So people often ask, what kind of thread can I use for quilting? And one thing that Handy Quilter always says is you can use any, we want you to be comfortable using any long arm thread. So high quality thread made specifically for long arm machines. What is the difference? Do you know the difference? I don't. What's, okay, what's I'm going to tell you. So I'm going to tell you a little anecdotal story first. So we had a customer that was having issues with their machine. They were breaking threads. They couldn't figure out. They brought it in with no thread on it. And we tested it. It worked fine. Blah, blah, blah. They went back home. Thread breaking again. And I was like, what in the heck? Like, I <laughs> we couldn't figure out. So I go down there to their house. I'm playing with around everything. I can't get it working. Else, I look up and they had a mo um, they had a popular brand of thread, <laughs> but it was not for a long arm. And I said, "Oh, that's your problem. Like it's not long arm thread." So the difference is, it is made with longer strands of cotton or whatever. If it's cotton poly, it's made with longer strands so that there's less breakage. Like if you remember from our little being earlier that's going up and down hundreds of thousands of times in a quilt right so that thread's got to be strong so using a high quality long arm thread is your best bet so is this a long arm thread yes glide so glide is um glide makes a this cone i i think all glide though don't quote me on that this is 100% polyester. Glide is really pretty because it has a shine. I like it. And it's so Glide is a long arm thread. Um, Annette, can you use serger thread in embroidery? I, well, in your embroidery machine. I don't know about that. Um, I don't know. I think I, it would depend on hmm, which serger threads maybe you have. I, yeah. I haven't used any, but I don't any know embroidery. on my embroidery machine. Yeah. I know. Um, so the other question is, how do we tell what a long arm thread is? So, um, so you, so superior, basically all superior threads are made for long arm. They do have some, they have one called masterpiece, which is more for piecing, but most of the, most of superior brand are made for long arm. Um, we're getting questions that I don't really know the answer to. <laughs> I apologize. I don't know much about sergers or embroidery machines. I apologize. Um, but but you probably could use embroidery thread on your long arm. So one question is, can you use all that serger thread on your embroidery machine? Sorry, hold on. What do we say? Something? I just was gonna say I I probably wouldn't. Yeah. Like you probably could. Right. But I don't know if your results will continually be great. Yeah. Um, but just because of how it is. Like it's, it, it just seems like that, that surgery thread's just a little bit different. Um, right. Like thicker or something. Yeah. I don't know. Someone said, uh, I would not. It really isn't the quality you need for embroidery. Yeah. I think I'd go with that. Yeah. Um, so we so handy quilts or even sorry superior says sells one called magnifico and it's called the trilobo polyester well that's the same as like the hemingworth and the glide it's a it's a it has it's called trilobal has three strands and it is um it's like a triangle it's extru it's extruded like a triangle so it has a sheen did you know that it's pretty yeah. fascinating. Yeah. I love I love the sheen that you get from those. I don't know if you can see that. I like, love the glide thread. Yeah, glide's yeah. great. And, um, and can, you can use that. Yeah, because glide, you can use an embroidery machine. It's the same as they sell, like, I was watching, oh, we had a, sorry, I'm getting distracted. We had a Kimberbell <laughs> event, and they were just talking, they were saying, well, why do you guys, sell glide or the Kimberbell usually still they'll promote glide, I guess. Not promote, but 
that's they what suggest been, or something. Yeah, it's been like in some of their Bella boxes and right. stuff like that. So they say glide because they have the most success in all of their machines. So when I went to Kimberbell, took a tour. Have you you've been to Kimberbell? Yep. They have this giant room of they have this big huge room and it's all different types of machines. So every brand of embroidery machine. And then they had they're all running something. And so two people were like running two machines. You know, one person was running two machines. So they test out every design on every brand of machine. And they said that when they're testing, Glide performed, um, it performed on every single one of them. So it was it was a good, uh, like if you're doing an experiment, that was a good control is, oh, we always use Glide and all of everything to make sure that it's, it stitches out right and stuff. So. Does that answer your questions that you didn't ask? And and Chris did comment that serger thread um, is and weight as embroidery. However, it's got a special coating on it for the oh, serger thread, which that's I'm why I said it feels like it's her. thicker. Like it just right a coating. Like I said, you probably could use it, yeah. but long term results, I don't know that you'd be really happy with it. Right. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Chris. And and Sherry asked, do you ever find that um, different machines prefer different threads? Yes. yes and like that's what <laughs> handy quilter same thing we used to say no you don't like i think it's just getting the right tension for everything so that we don't anyway yes some machines i think do better with certain threads yes yes yeah i feel like mine does there's and, some, there's certain threads but it just is a no-go <laughs> um let's hold on one second i saw and i saw something i wanted to point out that was okay so our fill is not for long arming um it's just not that was, I was gonna say i think that's gonna break that was the brand i didn't want to mention um that so i look up and there's an r fill cone on there i was just like uh and they just bought it because it was the color they needed but it just my machine yeah. my machine does it does okay with it but mm -hmm. it doesn't love our fill. like it right it really likes glide a lot and mm -hmm. it likes the hemingworth a lot yeah, on your embroidery. Mm -hmm. Yeah, on my embroidery yeah. sewing. Um, right, but I can sew with the other. Yeah, I just tend to get, and it's not like a lot of breaks, but if I'm going to get a break, it seems to happen with that. Right, I like that comment from yeah. um, <laughs> from Larry. MGQS offers many options and thread, just like paper towels, bounty or brawny, personal choice for their customers. Yeah, so in the stores we have Hemingworth. Do they have Glide up in Logan? I, I don't think so. Oh. Like you guys have, like I this kinda, is. I kind of want to buy this for my sewing machine. Oh, just a, just a piece with. Yeah. Oh. Well, <laughs> Look, it would never run out. <laughs> um, you could piece a lot of quilts. You could piece a lot. I do. I use phones like that in my machine, like in my my HD nine. Like I just put like it has a stand. I yeah. just have like a big. I used to use cone that big. It's great too. What I love about these, the Glide and the Hemingworth, I think um, Chris pointed this out too. Like for doing, um, like applique, doing a round applique. If you use like a bright embroidery thread, it's just so cute. Like it puffs it. It like just shows it off a little bit. Yeah. I did. Um, I uh, I oh on that heart quilt on my grandma Valentine quilt, I did a pink like a hot pink around the hearts. That's cute. Yeah, they are fun. Okay, what, what are we gonna talk about next? Um, t tension, needles. We talked about needles. Talk about thread. Okay. Now I wanted to go over to the machine and talk about a stitch formation. Okay, are you okay. ready for that? I am ready. I don't know if we just wanna. I don't know. I can carry it. Do you mind holding the computer? I can do that. Okay, I'm gonna carry it over. Oh, because just you don't because trust I me. want no, I want to show them the cute green wall. This is what I want to show them. Look at that cute green display of fabric. Oh, yeah, that's all. Okay, so we're here at the Moxie, and I have cute green thread on and black, black. Um, it's kind of hard with our computers, you guys. I hope you understand. Let me turn off the lights. If I can, um, uh, yeah, usually things just show off better if there's no light. Okay. All right. I'm at stitching at 11, 
going to make the stitches a little bigger. All right. So I'm at nine stitches per inch. Uh, okay. You can see that, all right, I think. Can you get a little closer? Yeah. So when you are long arming, you want that stitch to form inside of the quilt sandwich. Oh, well, you can't really see that. Oh, you can. That's kind of good. You can if I block the sunshine. Oh. Ugh. All right. There we go. Oh, that's good. That's good. So you see, we have a nice stitch forming, right? So what you want, what a, a nice stitch. You want that stitch to form in the middle of your quilt sandwich. And here, like, point up to me really quick. I'm just going to show them how, I'm going to show a, a demonstration of a stitch. Are you ready? So you have top thread pulling up this way. You have bottom thread pulling down this way. You set the bobbin first. Everything else is a tug of war. So if, you're st if your tension is too tight on the top, you're going to be pulling your bobbin thread to the top. That top thread is being a bully. It's, it's too tight, it's pulling too much. So your top thread is pulling too much. So I'm going to tighten this about two turns. So hopefully we can get a nice visual of that, maybe. And he's on the moxie. This is the moxie. Oh, see, I broke my thread. You broke your thread. I know, I couldn't get a good. So if, you're tight, if your top is too tight, then that means you're going to have your bobbin tension, your bobbin thread showing on top. Does that make sense? So if you're quilting and you see, uh, if you see the, we also for long arming, they recommend using the same color on the top and the bottom, but to make sure you have a nice tension, it's, you can um, put different colors in. I tell people if you have, a, if you're a new user to quilting, if you're new to quilting, then make yourself a, um, like a quilt sample. Make yourself a sample of what bad tension looks like. So do your tension too tight, do a little sample, do your tension too loose, do a little sample, and just see what it looks like. So tension too tight on the top is means your bobbin thread is showing through to the top, or it's coming up to the top. Does that make sense? So that's when you'll see like your bobbin color at the top like you'll see like the eyelashes eyelashing yep eyelashing is another one it's kind of hard to show on this uh i want i wish it was a little easier to show but hold on let me reflood this this is um again they someone said what machine this is the moxie this is the see it? moxie from handy quilter isn't it so cute and green and girlfriend green Oh dear. I love how you have the green thread that matches the green wall. Uh, yeah. I have spent all green, week setting this up. Green moxie. Yep. I've been working on this for a while. Um, you're not okay. very fast if you've been sewing on this for a while. <laughs> no, I just the setup. I wanted the setup. All right, let's try this again. All right. Oh, we got a problem. Now what'd you do to I don't know. It's giving me... Um, I'm not sure what happened. Oh, dear. This is where we're experiencing technical we difficulties. <laughs> All right. Um, I don't know what I did. I apologize. I messed something up. Uh, it's not happy with me. Nope. Your tension was my tension. terrible. It was fine until I messed with it because I tried to show mess with it. All right. Um, let's um, go back over to the drawing board. <laughs> I got an error. I'm have to... I have a little error. I'm going to have to like have that uh, sorted out. Oh, it's actually, there's a kind of a visual on this, on this handout here. So if you see that top tension too tight you can see the thread is um your top thread is coming to the bottom to the top top thread too loose your your thread will show on the bottom 
Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. So the, you have well, these questions. We're going to answer some questions then. Hold on. Okay. Do you only adjust the upper tension or do you adjust the bobbin tension? Okay. So the rule of thumb for a long arm is um, set the bobbin tension first. So if you have, if you'll set the bobbin tension first, and I actually, this is a really good place where it's nice to do a, um, sorry, hold on. So one thing, I'm going to get that out. <laughs> What's that? Janet's like, I have to laugh when Johnny has to take his glasses off to thread the needle. I know. I'm nearsighted. So if you watch us enough, he puts his glasses on and I I'm take like mine this. off and then we switch. And then we're like this. <laughs> yeah. I was thought I thought about getting the surgery, the whatever, the surgery. Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, if you do, you'll have to re have reading glasses. I'm like, mm, I guess it's sixes, right? Okay, so this is a bobbin case for a long arm. So uh, there's two main brands that Handy Quilter uses. I just know about Handy Quilter. I apologize. I don't know other brands as well because that's why I learned on was Handy Quilter. Um, so there's two brands, Cirliani and Koban. One's made in Italy, one's made in Japan. Uh, this is the Japan. So it says Japan. So it's the Koban. So when you're, if you, after when, while you're quilting, make sure to clean out your bobbin case. So I always say, I always just use a dollar bill. A dollar I don't think bill? I have one or something, just a thicker, like a post it note, like a post it note folded in half, basically. So there's a spring on the top of it. Um, so that right there is a spring, this piece of metal. I'm going to put this under there to show. There we go. So can you see that? That's called a spring. And you want to make sure you clean underneath that so that machine doesn't get used very much. So there's not any lint. But sometimes if you do that, like just run a piece of paper or something underneath that spring, that will help to clean it out. And then there's also a spring in inside. So if you can see that. Okay, you can see that little spring in there? That's called an anti-backlash spring. And <laughs> it's a pretty technical I thing. <laughs> know. And what it does is when you put your bobbin in, it it pushes it, it keeps it pushed out. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So I mean it, it yeah, it keeps it pushed against the it keeps it pushed outward. So when you put that spring in and um yeah you want to make sure that spring stays in there so some people will say oh take the spring out as yeah don't do that leave that spring in there you want that spring to keep in there and that keeps um so if that goes bad you'll get this the thread wrapped around the post and then the hook and it's just a mess you don't want to do that so okay so that's that's your bobbin this one i was going to say show how to set it uh, that's probably a little tight. So you want to do what's called a drop test. So they say put it in your hand, hold it up like that, and you want to be able to drop down. It's not moving. And I don't have a screwdriver right handy to fix it, and I don't want to bore you with that. So, But to answer your question, so set the bobbin tension first, and then everything else, as long as you have a good bobbin tension, then you want to match everything to that. So... If you set the bobbin tension first, that's kind of like your anchor and everything else you can just adjust from the top. So the handy quilters, they have those, um, that tension gauge on the side to get a good, to make a difference in your tension, you want to turn it like a whole turn, not just a little like, so on the bobbin to change the tension. Have you ever changed the tension on your like sewing machine bobbin? No. Oh, I know you can. You can. But hold on. Okay, so that bigger screw is the one that you would use to change the tension on that bigger screw. And you only need the slightest little titch to do it, you know, like to change it. 
just a little bit. But to, on the top, you want to turn it like a full turn um, to really to really show some change. Um, would we need to clean the case on our embroidery machine too? I don't know. On your embroidery machine, um, if you want more information on that, um, and Bill and Adam talked about like your sewing oh, machine and all did. of that on Friday. And so they have, if you'll go through the videos and look at three at three on this page, once we're done, like there is they some good, know. yeah, there was some good information on like cleaning your, cause your sewing and embroidery is going to be really close unless you're looking at like a multi needle, then it's mm -hmm. going to be a little bit different, but you do want to go in and you actually want to take out your bobbin case and you can just clean it with a Q-tip. So but yeah. go look at them and they take a machine apart and they show you how to do that. Okay. So. Okay. So this question, what do eyelashes on the bottom mean? So eyelashing is two, if it's on the bottom, then it's probably too loose, right? Yeah. Yeah. Too loose. I always get, and it takes me forever to think <laughs> oh, about. To think, How and when I was first learning, oh my gosh, I remember spending a whole day just trying to get this machine to stitch, make a nice stitch. It was so frustrating. But anyway, yeah. So again, you want that, that I just always, if you think about like a tug of war between the top and the bottom and they're both pulling, you want it to be balanced so that it's meeting in the middle of your quilt sandwich. That's why I just like to try to always keep in my mind. Like I want that stitch to form in the middle of the quilt. So too tight, meet, you're gonna show eyelashing on the bottom. Too loose, you're gonna show eyelashing on the, no, sorry. Too tight, no, now I screw up. <laughs> too tight, call you guys. Too tight, eyelashing on the, bottom too loose eyelashing on the top i think man is that right now i can't think of it now i'm nervous and i'm getting flustered so if the bot because well you have tension on the bobbin and on the on the top so which right okay so like, let's just hold on okay no no you're doing <laughs> this is my quilt sandwich <laughs> my my stitch yes tension too tight you'll see eyelashing on the top because okay. the top thread is pulling too much of the bobbin to the top. Yeah. Tension too loose is eyelashing on the bottom because it's pulling too much to the bottom. And so then you would adjust your And by eyelashing, we mean when you see, when you, you have a curve. Let me just grab a marker and draw it. I don't think there's any markers. Ugh. Okay, so when I'm testing, I'll do a zigzag and a curly cue, right? So you want to do a point. That's what you stitch. That's what I'll stitch. Okay. Yes, this is an this is a visual example of what I would stitch. <laughs> <laughs> if I am doing a, so if I, if it's two, this is the top. I'm showing the top. If top it's of too, the quilt. The top of the quilt. If it's too tight, um, Hey, are you guys leaving? Are you done? No, no, but thanks for lunch today. I just want to say thank you. Oh, yeah. Okay, so sorry. <laughs> so see this little, that little part right there? That would be your bobbin tension, your bobbin thread showing to the top. That's, that's in a zigzag. In a curly cue, that would be, that's what an eyelash, you guys. <laughs> It'd be hard to be a weatherman, don't you think? <laughs> like, I try to think if I was a weatherman. So eyelashing would be like that. You see the thread from the bobbin on top. It would look kind of like an eyelash. So it'd be like that curly, if you're doing a curly cue. So 
go. There's like, here's, yeah, so who we have here. <laughs> There's Fern. Oh, dear. Oh, my God. Just give them our, like, ten. I just did. I just did pinata <laughs> wallet on the ground. My wallet just exposed it on the ground. It's all good. It's all good. There was no cash, so there's still not a dollar bill in there. <sighs> okay. <laughs> okay. So Jana, I think we answered that question, right? Janet Lakari, would bottom lashes lashes too tight and top tension too loose? Yes. Yeah. Oh man, that was hard. I get kind of got flustered. Yeah, and you said like you you set your bottom, your <laughs> your bobbin, yes. and you go from there. So if you're seeing the eyelashes on top, right, you're gonna adjust it to loosen. loosen. It. Yep. If you're loosen. seeing them on the bottom, bottom. you're gonna tighten yep. it. So basically, you want that like that. So the quilt sandwiches, top fabric, bottom backing, and your batting. You want that knot of the stitch to form inside the batting, so it will be protected inside your quilt. So anything other than that, you'll see either pokies, we call pokies. <laughs> so if you have, you've seen that, like the wrong color thread on the bottom, you know, the wrong color from the bobbin. Like people will say, well, I have this black quilt in the back and I have to use white thread on top. And we're like, you're never going to, you're always going to see something. There's not a really good way to hide black thread on a white top, basically. So, and, and show quilts, show quilts. You'll, you look at the back and they're just every single color of thread you can imagine because they're matching the top of the quilt. Okay. And they don't want it to show through from the bottom. You're right. So. Okay. I'm going to try to answer some questions. Linda says, go to Superior and they have a great page for it. They do have great information. So Superior Threads, they are started as a long arm thread company and they're based now up in Seattle, I think. Portland area. Um, they are amazing. Yeah. And we will, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If you're only adjusting the top tension, you would need to tighten the top tension. Correct. Eyelashes on the bottom. Loosen the top tension if the bottom is kind of, thank you so much, Connie. I appreciate that. I just got upside down in my head for a minute. And of course, thank you for this. <laughs> Clear as mud. Just kidding. So, yeah, it's really, oh, it's hard to show on camera too. Like, it's just hard to show with our current technologies, but um, as far as right here. But like I said, if you have a long arm, if you have questions on just even like your machine quilting, um, do a sample. So stitch out, like do, like I said, do loops and stars. I always say loops and stars. So yeah, do some Zig zigzags and some circles and then see if you have anything coming up. Um, and then, uh, well, uh, oh yeah, T I would just say tighten the top a full turn, see if that brings bobbin, you know, the bobbin thread to the top, and then loosen it like two full turns and see if you see the opposite, just so you have like a little sample of what you're looking to not do in the future. Does that make sense? <laughs> I'm usually really good at those. <laughs> <laughs> 